Hey everybody, Dr. Jockers here, and today I'm talking about immune health, eight foods that strengthen your immune system. And so when we think about your immune system, we know that it's really, it works like a muscle. And what that means is it actually needs to be challenged in order to get stronger. So just like we have to exercise for our muscles to get stronger, our cardiovascular system to get stronger, it's really the same thing with our immune system. We actually need regular exposure from viruses, from bacteria, from different pathogens, and that actually helps prime our immune system and helps it get stronger. And that's very, very important. Now, the key is we've got to make sure our body is strong. So we are the host, and we've got to make sure that we have the nutrients we need, that we're living a, you know, a, a great healthy lifestyle. So that way we're able to keep the immune system at a really high level and keep it getting stronger with every single exposure. If we're not taking good care of our body, we're actually going to get weaker over time or we're going to be more susceptible to colds, fevers, flus, different types of infectious diseases. It's very, very important that we're strengthening our body on a regular basis. And so we look at five lifestyle activities that many people are doing that cripple our immune system. Number one is just too much sugar and carbs. And I'll talk more about that as we go on. Sleep deprivation. We know that sleep is probably the greatest thing you can do to strengthen your immune system. In fact, when you get a fever, right, what do you want to do? You typically aren't hungry. You're usually nauseous, which uh, basically allows your body to lower your blood sugar and lower your insulin levels. Okay. And that actually promotes an environment where your immune system gets better and stronger. You want to sleep because sleep is so important for your immune system. Okay. So those two things are, are really critical. Also drinking unfiltered tap water. So in our tap water, we've got things like chlorine, which damage our gut microbiome, um, different disinfectant byproducts and things like that. Just a lot of chemicals that alter our immune system. So we want to make sure we're drinking filtered water and staying hydrated with it. Staying indoors all day, believe it or not, not a good thing because our indoor air can be, you know, in most cases actually is more toxic than our outdoor air. So making sure you're getting out, getting fresh air is very, very important. And trying to get sunshine as well is really important for your immune system and chronic dehydration. So we know that drinking the wrong type of water is a problem, but also not drinking enough water can be really critical. And so when we look at a white blood cell, we know that white blood cells have a great need for vitamin C. In fact, white blood cells need 20 times more vitamin C than normal cells, and they need 50 times more vitamin C than what's in our blood plasma in order to really be, be effective in their ability to destroy pathogens. And pathogens would be you know, any sort of virus or bacteria, different things like that. Um, and so what happens is that the way that vitamin C actually gets into cells is through the hormone insulin, okay? But when we consume sugar, sugar has a greater affinity to get into white blood cells, right? So basically insulin is better at getting sugar into cells than vitamin C. And we also have a receptor called the GLUT1 receptor. And again, those things are going to uptake sugar before they uptake vitamin C. And that's actually because sugar is actually a toxin when it's stays in the bloodstream because sugar molecules, if they stay in the bloodstream too, too long, they'll bind to proteins and create advanced glycation end products, which, uh, which are highly reactive. So the body has ways of clearing that sugar. One way is that it gets into these white blood cells. The problem here is that when it gets in there, in fact, a blood sugar of 120, which would be classified as pre-diabetes if it was a fasting blood sugar, um, is it actually reduces your phagocytic index, your ability to uh, basically engulf and destroy pathogens by 75%, right? So you only have 25% the capacity that you would have if you had a lower blood sugar. Now, not everybody's waking up with a blood sugar of 120, but if we eat a high carb meal, so we eat pancakes for breakfast or cereal, our blood sugar is going to go up over 120. And for many people, it's going to stay in that range for at least an hour or two, if not longer. Okay. And then just kind of get repeated cycles of it with each meal. And this is a problem because basically we're suppressing our immune system pretty significantly for like at least half the day just by doing that. And so obviously that's going to reduce our ability to fend off pathogens. And really when we look at bacteria and viruses and these different microbes, they have a job and their job is to break down decaying matter. 
our job, going back to this slide up here, is to not be decaying matter, right? So we want to keep our body really resilient, really full of life, full of vitality, and then the bacteria, the pathogens actually work on our behalf. They help break down and help absorb nutrients. They help actually keep the, uh, the, the biome regulated, right? So they actually help to keep too much bad guys out of there. Right, so the, the bacteria, the viruses that are in our system, these things can all work for us if we create the right environment. That's the key. If we're not creating a healthy environment, then we're gonna, we're gonna have a lot of problems. And part of that healthy environment is making sure we're well hydrated, but also making sure that we are consuming filtered water, right? So getting a good high quality water filtration system, Reverse osmosis is great because it takes out everything. You can just add back some trace minerals, something along those lines. A lot of people are using the big Berkey, which is another, another one that you can use. Um, you know, so making sure we're getting good, really clean water is important. Now, top eight foods for immune health. These are things that you want to be consuming on a daily basis. Now, some of you guys out there may have a particular sensitivity to one or two of these. Okay, and that's okay. Like if I say consume lemons and limes, but you react poorly to lemons or limes, then don't consume that, okay? So if you have a sensitivity, don't use it. However, obviously these eight would be, uh, would be the best right here. So mushrooms, bone broth, lemons and limes, apple cider vinegar, garlic, ginger, olive oil, and onions. So lemon actually is rich in vitamin C, which we already know we need for a healthy immune response, as well as bioflavonoids, which helps synergize with vitamin C and help improve capillary permeability, help increase the amount of oxygen getting into our cells. Also very, very good for helping stimulating, stimulate stomach acid and bile. So it uh, can really help with digestion. Having some lemon with your meals or lemon water before a meal can really, really help with that. So a lot of good benefits. Vitamin C, very important for collagen production. So a lot of people notice that when they can start consuming more lemons, their skin feels softer. They take on you know, more beautiful characteristics in a sense, right? And on top of that, there's these negative charged ions and electrolytes that um, actually can really, really help improve energy levels. So lemons are a really good high energy food as well. Now, bone broth. So certainly, uh, you know, just boiling. Basically, you know, when you look at the bones of animals, okay, that's where the bone marrow is, right? That's where we're, we're actually creating our white blood cells. So that bone marrow is going to be really rich in nutrients that are needed, certain RNA, DNA that are needed, uh, different proteins, I should say, uh, that are needed in order to produce you know, good white blood cells ourselves. On top of that, it's also rich in collagen protein, which has proline and glycine and chondroitin and these different glycosaminoglycans that are very good for the immune system. And so it was like the, it's called the Jewish penicillin, right? Because in a sense, uh, you know, the chicken soup was kind of, I guess you could say popularized. I don't know if it was developed, but popularized in the Jewish community. And that was something that they would, that would be a regular go-to in the wintertime and something that they would use to strengthen their immune system. And now, you know, all of us know about chicken soup and the benefits of that. And that's kind of the old wives tale is, you know, use chicken soup on a regular basis, right? During the winter in order to help prevent colds, fevers, and flus. Now, your typical chicken soup out there is highly processed. You want to get one that is minimally processed. And ideally, you can actually make it yourself. So you can actually boil up like chicken or a turkey carcass and um, you know, basically pull out, loosen the collagen, pull out the bone marrow. Um, you know, these bones get really soft and tender when you're boiling them. And so you can boil these for, you know, eight to 10 and maybe up to 24 hours or so and really get a lot of the good stuff out of there, a lot of the minerals and, uh, and, and different, different uh, proteins and whatnot that, that, are, that are so beneficial for your body. And then obviously you can add different vegetables, right? So we have like a little recipe right here on what you can do. So creating your own bone broth, or you can also drink uh, pre-made bone broth. Uh, my family, we, we, we enjoy kettle and fire. So we'll get a great brand called kettle and fire bone broth that we use regularly. And, um, you know, mushrooms. So mushrooms actually have polysaccharides in them. One being beta glucan, beta glucans, uh, and tertrapenes that are really, really beneficial for the immune system. And so you look at even like white portobello mushrooms are great. Uh, even snow mushrooms, you know, these are great. 
but there's certain types that are even more powerful like reishi mushroom or cordyceps. And so these things can be really powerful for helping regulate your immune system, um, really supporting your T helper cells, which basically help balance your immune system. So you get less inflammation and a more coordinated immune response. They also can be really good, really antiviral, um, really good for calming down things like asthma and allergies, blood sugar, stability, uh, helping improve sleep because these also have adaptogenic qualities, meaning that if you're feeling anxious and wired at night, um, they can help calm you down. They can help to reduce that anxiety and help improve quality deep sleep. So really good stuff. Onions this is something you can put in your chicken broth or you know your whatever your broth or your soup is. But onions are great. I'm, I'm a huge fan of onions. Very rich in sulfur compounds like um, like allicin for, well, allicin's in garlic, but onions have quercetin and they also have a, a number of different sulfur compounds in them that are really, really beneficial for your immune system. And on top of that, the red onions also have anthocyanins, which again, really, really great for the immune system. These powerful polyphenolic antioxidants, very, very good for supporting your immune system and helping your body heal. So onions are great. Garlic is great. Garlic is rich in allicin. Uh, and other sulfur compounds. And sulfur is a key part of phase two detox and also very important for the immune system. Olive oil. Olive, olive oil is rich in polyphenolic antioxidants as well as the fat-soluble antioxidant vitamin E. Very good for the immune system. Definitely something you want to be using to help strengthen your immune system, helps downregulate inflammation, helps improve fat burning. So a lot of great benefits to using olive oil. And then apple cider vinegar. I'm a huge fan of using apple cider vinegar, which is rich in enzymes and malic and acetic acids. And these acids have a beneficial effect on our microbiome. They also are, they're bitter. And so they help to stimulate digestive juice flow, stomach acid, and bile, pancreatic release. So they can be very beneficial for using on food. I, I put apple cider vinegar on food, helps pre-digest the food, whether it's meat or vegetables, because the enzymes and the acids that are in there helps you pre-digest the food, making it easier in your digestive system. And on top of that, it helps stimulate, as you're taking that in, it helps stimulate better stomach acid production, better bile flow and pancreatic enzyme flow. So you get better absorption, you know, better breakdown and absorption of your food. Also good to drink before meals because again, it will help to stimulate those digestive juices. You can also put it in your soups and in your stews and it will make them more bioavailable. And again, those organic acids, acetic and malic acid, really good for the body for energy production, really good for supporting the microbiome. And this, this is the way I use it as I actually put it in water uh, and drink that in the morning, and it's fantastic for energy, right? Just like we talked about with the lemons, uh, really, really good for good high-quality energy production. Now, let's talk about a few supplements. Vitamin D is probably one of the most well-researched supplements for your immune system, and so you can see the benefits of vitamin D. Most people are not getting enough vitamin D, unfortunately, from the sun. So good sun exposure on a regular basis, very important for overall health. Uh, vitamin D, you can see the number one thing, it modulates the immune system, helps balance the immune system, helps reduce excessive immune activity like chronic inflammation, such as what we see in allergies and asthma, and also autoimmunity, okay? But also at the same time, it helps strengthen our immune system if we're weak, okay? If we're not able to have a good immune response, it's going to help bring it up. And so very, very important for the body. Here are some food sources you can use for it. Wild caught fish, like wild salmon, fatty fish, about 100 IUs per ounce. Now, typically, you're going to want about 1,000 international units per 25 pounds of body weight. So, so you can see these different sources, although these are very good foods, chicken or beef liver, ideally organic organ meats, egg yolk, grass-fed butter, grass-fed raw cheese, and then mushrooms. Even though these are all very good foods, um, they're not going to supply, really not going to supply enough vitamin D on their own without some sort of supplementation. So I am a big fan of supplementing with vitamin D. You can do it through things like cod liver oil um, or just taking a good high quality vitamin D. And I, I like vitamin D and K2 together. Um, cod liver oil will provide also vitamin A. And that's the cool thing about all these foods here. Everything I'm mentioning here 
pretty much uh, has has vitamin A in it as well. Egg yolk, grass fed butter, a lot of the fat soluble retinol, the the liver, uh, which is important because we need those fat soluble nutrients. They ideally work best together, particularly vitamin A, vitamin D, and vitamin K, vitamin K2 particularly. Um, so those are all important. Now, probiotics. Probiotics also really, really important for good overall health. And so probiotics can, again, immunomodulation, which means balancing the immune system. Very, very important protection against bacterial viral infections, obviously supporting the gut. Okay, it helps improve nutrient absorption. You can see all the benefits there. So I'm a huge fan of using probiotics to help support the immune system. And then also colloidal silver. I found that silver is very effective using some sort of colloidal or nano silver. So nano is actually smaller particles than colloidal and uh, actually works better. So that's what I, I recommend. But colloidal or nano silver uh, can, has, can be very effective for sinusitis, eye infections. You can actually kind of just spray or rub into your eye there to help uh, trap the infection and help to reduce it. Ear infections or fluid in your ears. So kids that are getting otitis media, for example, um, silver can be really helpful there. Sore throats, just be spraying it in. And it's highly antimicrobial, right? But it's also a, a selectively antimicrobial where it tends to select the more pathogenic species um, and is a, lot, is a lot more effective there. Uh, bronchitis and pneumonia. So when even when the infection gets deep into your uh, into your respiratory system, colloidal silver can be or nano silver can be really helpful. And then skin wounds. So just actually spraying it topically on the skin wounds can help reduce infection or chance of infection in there. Now, a couple supplements that I recommend. So we have one called Immunocharge, which has vitamin C. It has olive leaf extract, which olive oil is amazing for the immune system, but actually olive leaf is, is way more powerful. Olive leaf may be the most powerful uh, immune support supplement you can put in your body. We have that in the immunocharge. And then beta-glucan, which has a ton of research, which is the polysaccharide we find in, in the mushrooms. Tons of research on beta-glucans and their ability to help balance, modulate the immune system. And uh, so anyways, this, this product right here with the vitamin C, beta glucan and olive leaf can be really helpful. And I'll use this for people for short term immune support. So this is something that I, I, I tend to recommend on a daily basis. I would recommend having this around. So if you're feeling a little bit under the weather, you, you just don't feel your best, or maybe you didn't sleep well, you've been under a lot of stress, the weather changes, you've got all these stresses coming at you. You can hit this for a few days to keep that immune system really strong, prevent you from getting a fever, cold, or flu. So that can be super helpful here. Um, cold and flu support packs. So the other thing we're adding in with this is glutathione support So and, and zinc as well. So I didn't talk about those, but zinc is extremely important for healthy immune response. And so is glutathione, which is your body's master antioxidant. So we basically put together a kit that uh, is designed to help prevent or help you get over a cold or a flu quickly. So if you're somebody that you know you're getting cold, frequent colds or flus, things like that, you know, we certainly would want to look at the underlying root cause. And that root cause could be a vitamin D deficiency. It could be a zinc deficiency, which I see commonly. Um, it could be, you know, a, a gut infection or a chronic viral infection like Epstein-Barr or something like that. And those things should be addressed on their own. However, this cold and flu support pack will help strengthen your overall body to deal with whatever the underlying root cause is anyways, and also help you get over whatever the issue is in the, the short term as well. So, um, so if you're interested in that, definitely check it out. I have an article that's associated with this video below. Hopefully this gave you guys a lot of really good content. You know, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel, you shared this video, and you can hit the bell. Uh, which is right below this video as well, which will uh, let you know when I have a new update. Uh, so when I have a new upload or also when I go live so you can get right on and I can answer your questions. So anyways, guys, hopefully uh, this training was real helpful. Everybody be blessed and I'll see you soon.